What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to professionally set up virtual environments for new projects in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so oftentimes we're going to be working on multiple different Python projects at the same time. And those different Python projects rely on different packages and oftentimes on different versions of the same packages. So for example, I might have a data science project uh, that is a little bit older and it relies on pandas version one. So pandas one point something. And I might have a newer version or a newer project which relies on pandas version two point something. And those are incompatible. And on my system, I can only have one pandas installation. So when I open up the terminal, for example, and I type pip3 list or to have it in the requirements txt format pip3 freeze, uh, you can see that each package has exactly one version number. I cannot have pandas one point something and pandas two point something installed because when I install one of them, the other one is going to be uninstalled. So for example, if I say now pip3 install, I think I have pandas one installed here because of a project that I'm working on uh, without an environment. And if I say now I want to install pandas equals equals version two point something, uh, then it's going to uninstall the installation that I already have, as you can see here, uninstalling pandas 1.5 to install pandas 2.0.3. Uh, and the same thing the other way around. If I install pandas 1, it's going to uninstall pandas 2. And because I need both versions, depending on the project, the best practice way to do that, the professional way to work with multiple projects is to create so called virtual environments. So for this, I'm going to go to my desktop, let's say here now I have two projects, let's say, project one, and I have project two. And instead of just using my Python installation and all the packages that I have on my system, I'm going to create now virtual environments for those two different projects. And how do I do that? There is a core Python tool called VNF that we can use to create these virtual environments. Now, I also have a video already on this channel on virtual ENV, which is a third party tool. So a package that is not a core Python package. And this is useful if you're working with older Python versions. But since Python 3.3, there is this uh, core Python module VNF available. And this is the go to way to work with virtual environments. So let's say this is now the project one. Here, we can open up the terminal and we can create a new virtual environment. And the idea of a virtual environment is that you have specific package versions. Uh, and only those packages are installed in that particular environment. So you don't get all the packages that you have on your system, you only get the packages that you install for that virtual environment. And you only get the package versions that you uh, specify here inside of that virtual environment. And this is useful for multiple reasons. First of all, of course, because you can have different versions of pandas, for example, uh, for the different projects. But second of all, you can also just export everything that is installed in the environment. Uh, into, an into a requirement txt file so that people can easily install everything that you have in your virtual environment to reproduce uh, the setup, basically. So there is no real convention for naming the environment, you can call your environment whatever you like. However, the I wouldn't say convention, but the go to way to do that is to create an environment inside of a project folder and to call it either vnf, env, dot env or dot vnf. And I think that the dot vnf version is actually recommended in the Python documentation. So we're going to go with this one. So to create a virtual environment with vnf, we're going to say Python or Python three, depending on your terminal and operating system. And then we're going to say dash m vnf, and then the name of the environment in our case dot vnf. And as you can see now here, uh, it creates a .vnf directory in my project folder. And what I have to do now is I have to navigate into that uh, directory here. And then I'm going to just say here on Linux source bin, and then uh, source bin and then activate. And this is going to activate the virtual environment. Now, if I say pip three list, you will see that I have exactly two packages installed here, pip and setup tools. So basically nothing. And if I say now pip three install pandas, it's going to install the most recent version of pandas. And you will see here in a second, this is pandas two. So pandas two uh, point zero point three. And if I now say deactivate in this environment, 
Uh, and if I now say pip3 list and I grab the pandas line, you will see that on my main installation without a virtual environment, I have pandas1. But if I do the same thing here again with activate and then the same command, you can see I have pandas 2.0.3 installed. So I have different pandas versions depending on the environment. And of course, I can do the same thing now. I can deactivate again and I can go back to the desktop. I can go to project uh, to project two. And here I can create another environment with the same name. So Python 3 vnf and then dot vnf. And in here, for example, I do the same thing. Source dot vnf bin activate. And then I can just say pip3 install pandas equals equals uh, one point whatever. And then it installs a different pandas version in this virtual environment. So depending on which virtual environment I'm in, I'm going to be working with different packages. And of course, here I can also now uh, install something else like for example, uh, opencv dash Python. And the good thing about such a virtual environment is now that I can go ahead and export everything, I can take all the installed modules with the versions that are installed and I can export them to a requirements txt file. So pip3 freeze is what I want to get. This is the text and I can just take this and feed it into a requirements txt file. And then I can open this file. And you can see it is uh, what we have installed here in this virtual environment. So when I create some project here, and I want to pass this to someone to tell them, look, this is what I have. And if you want to run this on your systems, uh, on your system, those are the packages that you need to have installed, they can just run pip three, install dash r requirements txt, and they will, if they have their own virtual environment, they can then reproduce the exact setup that I have here, at least on a Python level. So of course, system packages are not included here. Uh, but this is also a benefit of virtual environments. Um, now, another way to see that you're in a virtual environment is to see where Python is. So you can say which Python three, and you can see that the Python three that we're currently uh, accessing here is part of the virtual environment. This is not the case if I deactivate. In this case, you will see that it's in user bin Python three. So yeah, this is how you work with virtual environments using the core Python module VNF. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.